So here are the basics on variables. Let's open up our project here. Open project, test project. Make a new file, new file, variables. All right, first kind of variable you can have is like first, first name equals John. And then you can display it like this. Echo first name. Go into your browser. Where are we? Localhost, webs, test, uh, variables, PHP. So, and we see John. To see what kind of variable that is, it's a string. We say echo uh, get type, first name, and F5 to show the changes. And we have John and string all as one word here. Why is that? Because we're in HTML and we need to add a little BR so that it breaks the line like that. So what other kind of variables do we have in PHP? We have integers, for instance, score equals 10. So we can show that score. Let's put a break at the end of this. And let's do copy and paste here. So score, control space, and we'll see what kind it is. 10 is an integer. What else do we have? Let's say we want John's latitude. Uh, that's 124.676553. Copy this whole, oh, we need a semicolon there at the end of every line. Let's copy this whole block here. So latitude, control space, latitude, control space, or enter. So what do we have here? It is a double. What else do we have? Boolean signed up for newsletter equals true. Echo signed up for newsletter. This is when code assist is nice in Eclipse. When you have long variable names like that. So, and we want to get the type as well. And we have Boolean. But why didn't it say true? It said one. That's because it converts true to one. So we should actually... Say something like, if signed up for newsletter, then echo... He signed up for the newsletter. Else, Echo, he did not sign up for the newsletter. Okay. And then we can see. And we also want to have this there as well. And... for completion sake, RBR tags. So there you have basically the four main types of variables that you're going to be working with in PHP, a string, integer, double, and Boolean. The other main one that you use, of course, which is a little different, is an array. Let's say you have files. You have some files here. You have index PHP. What else? We have test PHP. We have report PHP. So we have all those files in an array. That's how you define it. And we can say here, let's put some comments in here. This is the Boolean, just to keep things organized. This is the um, arrays. Now let's just say echo, what, what do we call it? File? Yeah, files, okay. Echo files and echo get type. Files. Oh, don't forget our break tags. So, now all it said is array when we asked to display it. That's not exactly what we wanted. So when you work with arrays, you're going to have to actually type for each, for instance, files as file. There we go. And then we want to say echo file. So what this is saying is for each of the files, for each of the items in that array. Define each one as file, and then inside this loop we can act on the variable file. Let's look at that, and we see that it actually works. So that's how you work with arrays. 
The only other important type of variable that I work with often are dates, but you don't have a date type in PHP. I store mine as strings, birthday equals in this format because it's the format that SQL uses. So let's say the birthday was the last day of the year, something like that. So you could have a date like that and you just display them as strings. Times became member when 2007, last day of the year, and then a space and at 12, 31 and 22 seconds or something like that. Like if you have a timestamp. So this is basically how I work with dates. And this here is how I work with dates and times. And then I use the quite rich PHP date time functions to get, for instance, if this is a Tuesday and Wednesday out of that and that kind of thing. One important point to remember and the source of many bugs is that PHP is case sensitive in its variable name. So if, for instance, we change this to first name with a capital F and display again, we see that there is no value in first name. And sometimes that can be very surprising. There's another nice way of displaying variables in PHP. You've noticed that I've used single quotes when displaying. You can also use double quotes. For instance, here, double quotes, uh, go, the user is first name and is logged in, for instance. So you just write it in a sentence like that and it works, which is very nice. We forgot to put our little B, B, let's be exact here. So we can put our BR in here, so it still works. One problem with that is if you have to use quotes inside, for instance, that is one reason why when I do a lot of HTML tags in exporting that I use the single quotes, because if you're going to say something like this, style, color, red, hello, good. for instance, like that, that's going to work. No problem. If you had these as double quotes, even Eclipse says, wait, 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 no way, there's something wrong with all of that. And you'll see that PHP says the same thing. The problem is, is that these quotes need to be escaped with backslashes. Like that. And then everything's okay for Eclipse and PHP. And I just think that this version with the single quotes is much easier to read than this, especially when you have a lot of HTML tags. Also, theoretically, the single quotes don't require as much resources because the PHP processor doesn't look in the string to see if there are variables that it needs to parse and replace and that kind of thing. So in general, you should use the single quotes. If you use the single quotes and have to say something like, I don't know, you're going to run into the same problem. The answer is... Let's see if PHP has the same problem. Yes, the answer is escape that as well. One other thing about variables that I wanted to say is you can see if a variable is set or not by using the is set. For instance, if is set, first name, the first name is defined. So let me comment out all of this just so I don't have to put in the BRs there. And we look and we see that the first name is defined. If we comment that out, we see that our sentence, the first name is defined, disappears. We put it back in and it appears. So that way you can find out if a variable is set yet or not.